please subscribe. The Peugeot 3008 is now better than ever, and is up to there with the best cars in the crossover class. That's thanks to its top-notch interior, up-to-date and car tech, refined drive and competitive engine range. It's also practical and good to drive, if not quite as good as the Sitka, our favorite compact crossover. It's comfortable, too, with a well-judged ride that's firm enough to stop it feeling bouncy, but soft enough to glide over bumps in the road. For many, the Peugeot 3008 will offer everything they need, it's economical, practical and upmarket, all at a reasonable price. If you're after a small SUV or crossover, the Peugeot should definitely be on your short list. Car buyers have embraced the concept of the crossover, and the Peugeot 3008 has adapted to ensure it remains relevant. The first 3008 was a bit of a mishmash of SUV and MPV, with an upright shape and questionable looks led to a raised ride height and split tailgate. But, for this MK2 version, Peugeot has jumped head first into the crossover market. Today's 3008 is a lot more stylish than its predecessor, with the front end inspired by the 308 hatchback and 2008 small crossover that came before it, while the high sides and small window area give it a sportier look than some rival crossovers. Gone is the old car's split tailgate, in favor of a conventional rear hatchback, but, despite the latest 3008 following the crossover route rather than remaining an MPV, there's more room in the back of the MK2 than the MK1 ever had. The cabin has also been given a radical overhaul to improve its looks, quality and level of high-tech equipment. Although the 3008 looks like a crossover, there's no 4WD version on sale. Instead, Peugeot offers its grip control system. Fitted in conjunction with all-season tires, this is effectively an advanced traction control system that can adjust the electronics to suit different terrain, giving the 3008 a bit more off-road ability than a conventional car. All models are front-wheel drive, and the engine lineup includes a 1.2 PureTec 130 petrol, a 1.6 CTHP 165 turbo petrol, 1.6 Blue D 100 120 diesels and 2.0 Blue D 150 and 180 diesels. A stop-start system is standard across the range, while an auto gearbox comes with the 1.6 CTHP and 2.0 Blue D engines, and is offered as an option on the 1.2 petrol and 1.6 Blue D 120 diesel. There is no basic access model, as in some other Peugeot model ranges, which is why the 3008 looks like it's priced higher than its main rivals. Instead, the lineup kicks off with active trim, then goes through LR, GT line and GT specs. However, you can't get every engine with every trim, the smallest diesel is only offered in LR spec, while the largest diesel only comes with GT trim. However, there's decent kit across the range, and every car has dual zone climate control and rear parking sensors, as well as a 12.3 inch digital instrument display with a separate touchscreen infotainment system. You get 18 inch alloys, sat nav and blind spot detection among other toys on alert models, while GT Line gets some sporty additions. Although unconfirmed, a 3008 MT has been hinted at by Peugeot insiders. Rivals for the 3008 are numerous in the crossover class. Chief among them is our current class favorite, the Sitka, while the Nissan Kashi Kai and Renault Kadra share much of the same tech between them and deliver a tempting combination. Other models to consider include the Volkswagen Tiguan, Kia Spartage, Hyundai Tucson, and Ford Kuga, while the latest Mazda CX-5 should set the handling benchmark in the class. Then, there are practical models such as the Honda CRV and Toyota RAV4 that are worth considering, too. As the Peugeot 3008 is closely related to the Citroen C4 Picasso, you'd expect its focus to be on comfort. Yet, it doesn't take long behind the wheel to realize the raised suspension has a negative impact on the ride. In a bid to deliver car-like handling, 
Peugeot's engineers had to go for a stiff setup that limits the body roll and corners. As a result, the 3008 crashes and thuds at low speed. Matters improve as you go faster, though, and the upshot is that the 3008 feels grippier and more controlled through a series of bends than the Renault Cadre. Its small steering wheel helps create the impression of fast responses, while the car always feels safe and predictable. Ultimately, it's not quite as engaging as the Agile Seat Cup, but it has the measure of the softer Renault, although the Cadre is more comfortable. Part of the reason the seat is better to drive is that it offers more feedback for the driver, with its nicely weighted controls. The 6-speed manual gearbox in the 3008 is decent, but the small button you need to hold to get it into reverse is a bit of a pain, and the gear changes aren't as smooth as in Anka. The E6 automatic gearbox is also a 6-speeder, and it shifts fairly smoothly, but it does tend to hold on to revs more than we'd like, especially with a rattly diesel engine under the bonnet. While there's no four-wheel drive model, and the 3008 clearly isn't meant to be a proper off-roader, some models come with a system called grip control. This adds 16-inch mud and snow tires and an intelligent traction control system that regulates the power to the front wheels and low grip conditions. For most people, this will simply make defeating a muddy hill a bit easier, but it's no match for a proper 4x4 system. For now, there are two petrol and two diesel engines in the Peugeot 3008 lineup. The range starts with the 1.2-liter 3-cylinder PureTech 130 petrol, which produces 129 bhp and 230 newton meters of torque, and is available with 6-speed manual or automatic gearboxes. It's a great choice, being quiet at low revs and sounding sweet as you get up to speed. There's plenty of power, and 0 to 62 miles per hour takes 10.8 seconds with the manual gearbox. It's economical enough to be a proper alternative to the diesel for those with short journeys in mind. The 1.6-liter THP petrol comes only with an automatic gearbox and has 163 bhp. The result is that it goes from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 8.9 seconds, but it's not as efficient as the smaller 1.2-liter unit. A likely top seller will be the 1.6-liter Blue D120 diesel, which has 118 bhp and 300 newton meters of torque. It's got plenty of performance, going from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 11.2 seconds, 11.6s with the automatic, and is quite at idle, if a little rattly as you bring the revs up. There's also a 99 bhp version of this engine, but it's no more economical. Finally, there's the 2.0-liter Blue D diesel, which comes in 148 bhp and 179 bhp forms, the former coming only with a manual gearbox and the latter only with an automatic transmission. 0 to 62 miles per hour takes 9.6 seconds in the lower-powered version and 8.9 seconds in the top-spec unit. The most compelling choice in the engine range is the 1.6-liter Blue diesel with 118 bhp, which will be a big seller in the UK. It's easy to see why, as the numbers stack up, 70.6 miles per gallon and 104 grams slash km CO2 emissions don't quite match the Nissan Kashi Kite 1.5 diesel 74.3 miles per gallon and 99 grams slash km. But it's not far off and the 3008 does have more power. With the E6 automatic gearbox, those figures drop to 67.3 miles per gallon and 108 grams slash km, so the penalty for the auto version is minimal. The 99 bhp 1.6 liter diesel only manages the same 70.4 miles per gallon as the higher powered version, so we'd avoid it and go for the 118 bhp version instead. The other two diesel engine choices are 148 bhp 2.0 lit unit, which returns 64.2 miles per gallon and 114 grams slash km of CO2, or 179 bhp version of the same engine WTH and automatic gearbox that returns 58.9 miles per gallon and 124 grams slash km of CO2. 
petrol options include the 1.2-liter 130 Pure Tech, which is a three-cylinder unit and manages 117 grams km of CO2 and 55.4 miles per gallon, which isn't bad. If you're doing short trips, this is the engine to go for. The 1.6-liter THP petrol only manages 48.7 miles per gallon and 129 grams slash km, the worst figures in the 3008 range. Insuring the Peugeot 3008 will cost about the same as the rival Nissan Qashqai, with the cheapest model being the PureTech 130 in entry-level active trim, which is in Group 11. That changes depending on the trim you go for but in general the 1.2 will be the cheapest to insure. The 1.6 petrol is in group 13, while the lower powered 1.6 diesel is in group 12. Our choice of engine, the 118 bhp 1.6 diesel, is in group 16, or 18 in GT line trim. The 2.0 liter diesel engines sit between groups 21 and 24, depending on which spec you go for. While the Peugeot 3008 has a somewhat divisive design, the upright grille and chunky bodywork give it a unique look, and it's certainly a big step forward from the previous model. Whereas the old car was an MPV-style crossover, this is a genuine SUV. The detailed headlight and taillight designs are standout features, and the steep windscreen, raised ride height and hidden C-pillar all add to the look. Some will love the styling but we prefer the sharp suited seat car on the outside. It's a different story inside, with the 3008 getting a superb interior. It wraps around the driver from the center console to the door and, of course, incorporates Peugeot's latest infotainment system with an 8-inch touchscreen. The small steering wheel and high-set instrument cluster that we've already seen in the rest of the French France range also appear. The difference here, though, is that the 3008 gets Peugeot's latest iCockpit display, which incorporates a 12.3-inch screen behind the wheel. It's similar to Audi's virtual cockpit, and means you can change the layout of the dials, decide what is displayed and how or, most usefully, show sat-nav directions directly in front of you. It's an excellent arrangement, and unlike on many other Peugeot models, it's easy to see over the top of the steering wheel. In fact, there's not much that Peugeot has done wrong with the interior of the 3008, as it's also one of the best looking in its class. The materials you touch are of great quality and the wraparound design with metal accents gives the cabin a really upmarket feel. It doesn't seem as spacious as a Nissan Kashi Kai or Sika, but it's much more stylish than either of those rivals, and the only minor setbacks are that the aircon controls are on the touchscreen display, which makes them hard to use on the move, and the materials lower down in the cabin are of lower quality. All versions of the 3008 feature the impressive 12.3-inch cockpit setup that ditches traditional dials in favor of a fully configurable TFT screen ahead of the driver. This is linked to an 8-inch tablet-style capacitive touchscreen that sits on top of the dashboard and controls settings for the hi-fi, phone connection, car preferences, climate control and, on older models and above, the sat-nav. The Peugeot has the same TomTom Tom Live Now features as the Renault, but a more generous three-year subscription is thrown in. Entering a destination is simple, and once underway you can beam the map and directions to the iCockpit display, making it a dawdle to follow the route. Also included is the mirror screen software that gives access to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This makes it simple to link to your smartphone on the go as the big screens and crisp graphics are intuitive. Overall, the in-car tech is very good, but the display isn't as responsive as its rivals, and we still don't like the fact that all of the features are on the touchscreen. It's very hard to use on the move, making simple tasks like changing the temperature or fan speed a frustration. The Peugeot 3008 is a five-seater only, with the five-door layout that's normal for any car in this class. There's no 4x4 option, but some cars do get grip control, which mimics the all-wheel drive system without taking a toll on economy. Just don't mistake the 3008 for a full-on off-roader.
visibility isn't bad, as the driving position is quite high, but as in most cars in this class the rearwards view isn't the best thanks to a small rear glass area. Cabin storage isn't too bad, but for passengers it feels a bit more cramped inside than a seat car or Nissan Qashqai. You'll find plenty of family-friendly storage in the 3008, with large door bins, a deep, leaded cubby between the front seats and a handy tray ahead of the gear lever, housing the USB and 12 volts inputs. This area is also a wireless smartphone charging point on GT Line and GT Specs, it can be added to other models for about £120. The Peugeot 3008 is just over 4.4 meters long and 1.8 meters wide, which is about the same as a seat car, and both weigh around 1,300 kilograms. It's also able to tow up to 2,000 kilograms, brake trailer, in 2.0 liter diesel form, although that shrinks to just 1,200 kilograms in a car with the 1.2 liter petrol engine and an automatic gearbox. Pick your engine carefully if you're planning to tow any trailers or caravans. Hop in the back and you'll find that the 3008 actually has plenty of space, even if it doesn't seem like it from the driver's seat. It's slightly longer than a Qashqai, so there's plenty of legroom in the back seats, and headroom shouldn't be an issue for anyone but the tallest passengers. Occupants in the back don't get quite as much legroom as in a Renault Cadre, although the flat floor means the Peugeot is a comfortable choice if you regularly carry three passengers in the rear, as no one will be fighting for foot space. It's not the roomiest feeling car, with the back seats seeming a bit dark thanks to the small windows and tinted glass. The front seats are also surrounded by the dash and center console in such a way that the car feels smaller than rivals but it does mean it feels more upmarket in there, too. Open the large tailgate and you're confronted by a low load lip, wide opening and cavernous 591 liter capacity. The boot lacks the cadre's clever solutions, but it's well shaped and has a small amount of storage under the floor, which can be lowered for more space or raised to create a flat base when the rear bench is folded. The 3008 boot space dwarfs the 430 liter load area in the Nissan Qashqai, and beats the 510 liter space in the seat car. The seats fold down flat and there's only a small loading lip, so getting longer items in the back is a bit easier. Total load capacity with the seats down is 1670 liters. The boot features a fully removable floor and a full-sized spare wheel plus a handy storage net for keeping items steady in the back. While the Peugeot 3008 has yet to feature in our driver power customer satisfaction survey, Peugeot has a brand finished in 13th place, beating the likes of Porsche, Seat, BMW and Volvo. That bodes well for the 3008, which feels well built from first impressions. It's impossible to guess how reliable it will be in the long run, so we'll have to wait for a future survey to find out. Where the car has proved itself, however, it with its safety rating. The 3008 features a host of safety equipment and driver aids, including automatic emergency braking, as standard. Extra kit includes blind spot detection, lane keep assist, driver attention alert and adaptive cruise control. And, the end result was that the Euron Cap awarded the car 5 stars after crash testing it in 2016. In the adult occupant section, the car scored 86%, with researchers complimenting the car on its protection for different sized front seat passengers, as well as getting maximum points in the side impact test. For child occupants, the 3008 scored 85%. Your own cap noted that head protection for children was good, and there's clear indication about the status of the airbag to allow baby seats to be fitted. Your own cap said that the front of the car had predominantly good or adequate protection to the head of a struck pedestrian, scoring 67% in this category. Maximum points were scored for the pedestrian's pelvis and legs, too. Finally, the safety assist category brought a 58% score, with the researchers pointing out the car's standard seat belt reminder, traffic sign recognition and lane departure warning. 
the Peugeot 3008 gets a two-year unlimited mileage warranty from the factory, plus an extra year from the dealer for a total of three years. That matches the industry standard, which is mainly only beaten by Kia's seven-year and Toyota and Hyundai's five-year warranties.